Hello, everybody. Welcome to the next uh, episode. Let's talk Toth Tech. Um, we have a few things uh, on the list. Um, demos might be one topic. So if you feel like you want to demo something, put yourself on the list. Uh, we're going to do that afterwards. And uh, looking at today's agenda, there's just one uh, item. Um, uh, about Zentry. If you have additional topics, feel free to add them on the fly. I can do agenda karaoke. That's easy job for me. Um, Pep, thanks for reminding that I need to hit the record button. That is something that I always forget. So on to the first topic. It uh, was uh, Zentry sending me a few emails uh, that we were over quota. Uh, so I wonder, do we use uh, Zentry um, in an active way or in an in a non-active way by having it open uh, issues on our GitHub organizations? Is it something that we should keep doing or is it of null value to us? Is it just nice to have or really integrated in our workflows? That uh, would be my question. Any, so yeah. we, we used to actively use it last year, uh, but yeah. due to cluster issues, we, so basically Sentry works in a way that it sends out issue, it creates issues in Sentry uh, page uh, based on any trace back or any failure in our clusters. So all the components are, are, tra uh, are being watched by Sentry. So if suppose anything breaks, it will open a new issue. So last year, a lot of cluster issues were going on due to which components were going up and down, uh, which basically uh, blocked the whole Sentry, uh, went, made it air and uh, go over the limits. Due to that, uh, because we always thought it was over the limit, we never went back to it because every month, I think it clears it up, but mm. we never went back to it. For, uh, funnily, I also went to Sentry last week and I was looking at it. I cleared a few things and it's a good tool because it shows us something if we have missed in the cluster uh, because a lot of our components do uh, show that they are working, but because uh, uh, we are, we don't uh, not, we don't fail on a lot of things. We pass it as a warning. This catches the, the, the phrase back and we can open those issues. So it's helpful for sure, uh, but uh, one thing we need to make sure is like uh, making the clusters uh, or making the components more reliable so that uh, we don't have these uh, like kind of uh, rate limit issues. But I think it's good to have. Uh, mm -hmm. I have noticed that a lot of the people who have joined now, they are not in the list of Sentry team. That's the, that's the reason they can't see it, even if you shared the uh link and passwords and stuff like that uh mm -hmm. so uh, i think I right know. now it is just waiting for issues right yes uh i don't know why it went to rate limit today i saw it in the morning too uh because there is there was only two or three bugs that's it but it kind of said that we are over limit but it's also June 23rd, so seven days from now, it should mm -hmm. refresh. Uh, what we can do is uh, at least have few of the folks uh, yep. create accounts. Uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, to me, it sounds like uh, useful, at least from your point. Um, I'm going to add some, some more people to the organization so that all of you uh, have access uh, to the Zentry thing. It is like uh, GitHub, right? There's a Toss Station organization, and there are some applications, not repositories, and uh, all our components can be and are configured to send into that specific application on the Zentry organization. So I think the whole production system is consolidated in that one Zentry application, right? Mm -hmm. um, uh, um, could you could you do a flyover somewhere next uh, two, three weeks, uh, Hashard, so that people yeah. get an understanding of what Sentry can do for us. I think yeah. the most prominent thing is if Sentry is opening GitHub issues. Mm -hmm. uh, that That's pretty straightforward. Uh, we're going to see them anyways. But there's a yeah. lot more in Sentry that might be helpful. Yeah. I mean, uh, I'll definitely show it to everyone. Uh, everyone can have access if they want to, uh, but it's not necessary for sure because uh, it's only on the conference which we are monitoring. A lot of the team is already doing that. 
Uh, but yeah, like last time when I have spoken to you about this topic, we figured out that we cannot remove environments, past environments from it. Uh, that's one thing. If we could do it, what we can do is remove uh, like test clusters, small cluster, and keep it specifically for stage and production so that we know that we have to fix these two things and keep it yes. more on a hundred person level but let's see that we can figure it out yes thank you okay. folks have to create the account then only you can add it add them i don't know i can't remember what the workflow was if i can invite people or not but i gonna have a look at it uh i think i can do it uh but I'm not an admin, so I can't remove people. I can remove people. OK, cool. Anything else, something we need? Any questions, any comments? No. Cool. Um, demos. So, yes. uh, before we go to demos, the next topic could be a similar topic. I think me and that were talking about the access in GitHub org. I went through, I'm going through the GitHub config for our organization. I'll update it in a minute. Uh, I looked through the roles. There is a, a read, write, triage, maintain, and admin. Uh, we were thinking we can give right access, but right access is a lot more than what was initially thought. It allows to remove things as well uh, in terms of commits and stuff like that. So I guess we'll stick with triage just to update on that. But I'll extend that. I'm extending the triage to all the repos, at least the ones which are not archived to every one of us. Uh, and I'm, I'm removing some of the teams because some teams feels redundant on GitHub teams. Uh, I'll definitely comment on it I'll, when I open the pull request. Yes. Uh, and uh, with regards to a pull request that you that I opened and that you ask a question on, um, I so think. I uh, uh so put it in a right way i just want i thought uh we can keep uh at least the honorary members as members uh yeah, because I, yeah it will I, uh, and we can remove them from the owners file so that they don't get these frequent pings of getting reviewers re reviewing but we can have them as a member so that if ever in the future they want to contribute they the bot will not say oh you are new to thought uh at least it will acknowledge that they have been member for a long time. I'm all in. Um, the reason I did that is I think uh, Frido removed himself for clarity. Right? If you're going to look at his uh, personal uh, space, he's not uh, on the TOS station organization, nor the AICOE, nor the Open Services organization. I, I think he removed himself for clarity. Um, I saw that because his user switched from being an owner of the organization to invite is pending. Ah, uh, see, makes sense. Got it then. That, that is uh, just something that I put in the uh, YAML file then, and um, yeah, th therefore the pull request. Um, but um, I, I completely agree with your um, uh, description. I think that is what we've done for all of them. Um, we just leave them in all the organizations. If if users decide to do something else, great. Um, but I think uh, paying tribute to the people is an important part of open source. Therefore, I would leave them all in the organization. Yeah. And I think for most of all, I didn't even uh, remove uh, privileges or something. I think Francesco is still um, um, some kind of admin or something. I really don't see that as a Red Hat employee thing. I see that as an as a TOS community thing. Yeah, uh, but I don't think there are a lot of privileges, but yeah. I, I can't remember. Cool. Um, yes, demos. Anyone up for a demo? I had one on there. Yes. 
Uh, how do we do demos nowadays? If we're gonna record them in line in this meeting, it will be problematic to publish them separately. I can I record the one too for just. Yeah. Post. If if we stop this recording, I don't know if there will be a second take on the same date. I I don't know how Google behaves. Um, moving over to Blue Jeans again feels awkward, anyways. Uh, so. Maybe I stop recording, you're gonna start recording, and then you're gonna do the demo. Okay. Does that make sense somehow? Yeah, I guess. I I, let's okay. see, let, let, let's see what happens. I try to stop the recording, and we're gonna wait for the demo. If I find the freaking buttons to stop recording, and click five times to stop recording. 